So, uh, I just want to first, I, before I even get started, and I know my time doesn't start until I say open your Bible, so, um, but I, I just really uh, want to, uh, how do I say it without being worldly? Well, I'm all flesh anyway. Compliment and thank and praise the Lord uh, for all the preaching that's happened thus far. And uh, I, I can't really think of any of the preachers where, like, right about in the center, you know, I come from Pentecostal. I wanted to stand up and start preaching the rest of their message, you know? And, and did, do you ever get that, Brother Josh? You get that? Okay, because I'm like, man, like, man, I, God called me to give the rest of this message, you know? And uh, I got, I was in a Calvary Chapel once, and this lady stood up, and she went, la, la, la. And, and, you know, Calvary Chapel, they're, they're like the prudes of the Pentecostals, you know? And uh, the guy's like, I've never seen the Holy Spirit uh, interrupt the Holy Spirit. And I'm just like, oh, you pious fool, you know? But anyway, yeah, I was kind of feeling like that lady, I guess. I wanted to stand up and go, Whoa. anyway. But anyway, uh, but yeah, this has really been an amazing year. And uh, I think, I think la me and Sean were talking about, you know, uh, last year... And I mean, even the weeks up until this one, uh, I, I was, I mean, to be honest, I was kind of in a dark place last year and God was uh, merciful to me to allow me to preach. And uh, I don't know about y'all, but I don't know, I kind of just wear my heart on my shoulder right, right here. So I'm not very good at hiding my emotions. Obviously, you all are laughing at me, but now I'm laughing at you because you're all crying. All right. You know, so uh, just join the club all right, <laughs> and enjoy it. You know, um, but I, I do think if you can't cut loose up here, you got a problem. <laughs> you know, um, the, these are, uh, and not trying to be disrespectful, you know, I mean, I, I get the whole thing. Um, we need to take stuff serious, but you got to learn how to cut loose, too. And, um, you know, Brother Sutek, he, he, I think, often tries to remind street preachers when you're out there, if you can't enjoy what you're doing, you're just going to burn out. And it's the same thing in the Christian life. If you can't enjoy what you're doing, you know, if you're all prim and proper all the time and you never breathe, you're, you're just going to burn out. You know, and... Uh, well, well I, I could kick so many things right there, but I have a specific group that I want to kick tonight. And uh, it's you. <laughs> well, and this is just by way of in introduction. This is not my message, but every once in a while, God talks to me, okay? And believe it or not, <laughs> he really does. My wife's over there like, no, oh, yeah. no, she didn't do that. She didn't do that. But, you know, I thought it was actually very um, enlightening. I probably could have preached a whole message on this when all the pastors go in there. And the lights are turned off. And everyone goes to hide. Everyone goes to hide. Now, before we went to go hide, Brother Jay gave us a perimeter. Amen? Remember that? I remember that. And I don't remember very much. I remember because I was confused. And I was like, Brother Jay, what is the perimeter? He said, the inside gate. That's what he said. All I know is, is all I know is, is there is about 15 minutes in, and me and brother Josh Stevenson are all the way down the hill, yeah, that's right. and I'm like, why are we founding people all the way down the hill? That's right. Preach at their sin. So <laughs> there's an application here, though, y'all. There's an application here. I think that was a perfect picture of the body of Christ today. The lights are out. And there are a few men that are searching to find like-minded brethren or, or backslidden Christians, but they've went too far. And we can't find them. And the lights are out. We're out there with flashlights trying to find you. There were still people we didn't find. So when me and Josh were out there, we saw an over three-foot-long rattlesnake out there. And the rattlesnake was probably 15, 20 feet Maybe 30 feet. I'm not trying to exaggerate. I, I want you to get the illustration. There was a real rattlesnake out there. And then we have people within, well within a stone's throwing distance, laying on the ground in the dirt. Well, over here we had people laying in the bushes. 
Do you, do you guys know where rattlesnakes like to hang out? In the bushes. So I mean, I'm driving back with Mary Chris like, we saw a miracle from God. And she's like, what do you mean? We saw a miracle from God that nobody from this church got bit by a rattlesnake last night. That was God's grace. That was God's grace. But what I want, what I want to kind of, now I'm going to try to bring this thing in somewhere, is um, my concern as a pastor, searching around, and I mean, I'm, I'm not any type of a veteran pastor at all. I'm still, I think, uh, quite a new guy on the block, but, but I've learned a couple things. And uh, I, I, think, um, I think there's people here right now in, like right, like you, y'all, y'all, every one of you, maybe not every one of you. I hope not every one of you, but I know there's somebody here that um, that is playing around with different doctrine. I know it. I had a very enlightening conversation with a Ruckmanite. Somebody that was actually brought up under Gene Kim's ministry. And somebody that I would have never expected these words to come out of their mouth. They're a full-blown Calvinist now. Yeah, that's right. And I'm like, no, but you, you, were, going, you were going to a good church. You, I mean, good preachers, good pastors. You know Gene Kim. I know what he preaches. I know what he believes. And... and I'm getting all the 101 Calvinist arguments. And I'm like, I thought our type of churches would have equipped this person to see the, uh, the error. But obviously not. So I got a weird message for you. And, and I, I'm hoping to catch you off at the pass. Okay, because... Over-familiarity breeds contempt, mm -hmm. all right? And you know Brother Randy, you know Pastor Gene, you know Pastor Stevenson, you know all these pastors, you know Pastor Ken back in, you know them. You're so familiar, you want someone new. So you're going to jump online, and, and you're going to find some, you're going to find some uh, uh, scholarly, you know, fool, amen? And, and somebody that can use big words, and you know, you need it right over the plate. That's why we preach this way. That's right. Because if we colored it up, yeah. you'd be like, oh, I didn't understand it. Yeah. So we're just like, you, you stinking fool, yeah. quit it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know, that's what we say. Right. And we hope that you can at least swallow that. Amen. Um, that's my concern as a pastor. And it's not just Calvinism that our folks are being drawn to. It's hyper dispensationalism. Yeah, and, bro, I'm from Southern California. I deal with Pentecostals. Yeah. hyper That's not even interesting to me. You know what I'm saying? I mean, hey, man, at least the Pentecostals know how to get this thing rolling, you know? I mean, hyper Dude, do you ever leave your house, bro? Go outside. Get some sun, man. But I, we're not going to pick on them tonight. We're going to pick on the first party. Um, I found a book. I found a book. What's the book? Oh. Oh. It's uh, The Essential oh. Truths of the Christian Faith, uh -oh. written by R.C. Sproul. Ooh. It's an old book. Man, I was looking at it before we came. This thing was printed in 1992. Now, before we even get into this, because I hope to shock the tar out of you, before, before we get into this, I just want to say, could you assume he understood that he was about to commit himself in writing when he wrote this book. Mm, yeah. Could you assume that he figured more than five people would probably read this book? Yeah. Could you assume that not only that he understood that not only his friends, but his foes would read this book? Yeah. Are you ready? So on page 15, and why, I'm, why I need to delineate this before I go any further, because I'm not taking a hobby horse here, there's a reason why I chose to pick on him. You ready? The Bible is called the Word of God because it's claim, believed by the church, uh, that the human writers did not merely write their own opinions, but that their words were inspired by God. We're on board. We're on board. 
The Apostle Paul writes, all scriptures given by inspiration of God. Uh, the word inspiration is a translation from the Greek word meaning God breathed. God breathed out the Bible. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he has said nothing so far. I mean, this guy is on point. Mm -hmm. Scripture is God speaking. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> the word inspiration also calls attention to the process by which the Holy Spirit superintended the production of the Scripture. The Holy Spirit guided the human authors so that their words would be nothing less than the Word of God. Mm -hmm. This is intense. Yeah. This, I mean, man, this is good. Yeah. Ready? <laughs> but inspiration does not mean that God dictated His messages to those who wrote the Bible. Rather, the Holy Spirit communi uh, communicated through the human writers the very words of God. Okay. 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 Now He's going to drop the gavel. Okay? He's hoping you're, I, I assume He's hoping you're not going to finish the chapter. It says, This does not mean that the Bible translations we have today are without error but that the original manuscripts were absolutely correct. Which means what? Which means what? You don't have the words of God. All, the, all, that, all that fluff he was just talking about, at the end, he just dropped the mic right on your forehead and said, you don't even have the words of God. That's what he said. In this book here, Essential Truths of the Christian Faith on page 275, he uh, shows that, well, he attempts to show there's no pre-tribulation rapture. On page 228, wow. he, pr he tries to prove that infants should be baptized. Wow. On page 146, that God is pleased with sin. Page 67, that God allows and wills sin. On page 219 through 220, and page 223 through 224, he acknowledges in a positive sense, Good Friday, which is page 63, and the sacraments. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I have a quote from Brother Vance's book on page 35. All Calvinists have one thing in common. God, by sovereign and eternal decree, has determined before the foundation of the world who shall be saved and who shall be lost to obscure the real issue of vocabulary has been invented to confuse and confound the Christian. That's right. Yeah. That's Plain right. English, they know how to hide behind words. That's it. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me finish the quote because I think it helps. The arguments about supralapsarianism and infralapsarianism, total depravity and total inability, reprobation and preterition, synergism and monergism. Did I read all this right, brother? I think so. Okay, all right. Free will and free agency, common grace and special grace, general calling and effectual calling, oh, wow. perseverance Great and words. preservation, and the sovereignty of God. So... What Brother Vance found out is there all that, if you didn't get any of that, because yeah. Brother Vance is showing you how ridiculous it is. That's right. Yeah. And he's yeah. showing you they just make a big fluff word That's to right. impress you impress, when yeah. it's about 10.30 p.m. and you're mad at your pastor and you're yeah. thinking, how can I get out of this church? How can I get out of this church? John MacArthur, John MacArthur, R.C. Sproul. And, and, oh, did I drop it? <laughs> There's got to be truth somewhere else. There's you know what? The first mark of any cult is the rejection of the King James Bible. Amen. That's right. Amen. You need to swallow that. The first mark of any cult is the rejection of the King James Bible. I just feel like you got to say it more plain these days. You know, that Calvary Chapel fell. Four Square Movement fell. Pentecostal movement fell. Lutherans fell. Methodists fell. They all fell. And, and you know what? As you're mad, so mad at your pastor, so mad at that brother who's a Bible believer that hurt your feelings, you know what? Get used to it. Amen. Jesus got his feelings hurt too. What if he were to quit on you? Yeah, amen. Amen. Good preaching. And he didn't. And I got another huge quote, but I'm not going to read it because it just says the same thing Brother Vance did that they have a changing, unsettled theology. Who? Calvinists. Yeah. Yeah. Raise your hand if you do not know what Calvinist means. Okay? Okay, let me tell you. So a Calvinist 
A Cal thank you for your honesty. A Calvinist believes that God essentially created a portion of humanity to go to heaven and a portion of humanity to go to hell. Not their choice not included. Okay? Does that make sense, brother? Okay. I mean, not biblical sense, but you understood the statement. I get it. He's like, no, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> so I'm going to give you tonight, and this message is called Four Calvinist Problems, a brief critique on R.C. Sproul's Essential Truths of the Christian Faith by Randolph Gorsky. That's what I named it. That's right. The stinking ex-drug addict that can, that can figure it out. Why can't you, you stinking doctorate? Hey, Amen. I heard Sam. You know, I heard Sam Gipp say it, and he could maybe has more room. But he called the PhD a post hole digger, and I just got a kick out of that. You know, I'm just in the background. I just. <laughs> yeah, I don't got a PhD. I don't know. I don't know what it's like, but I thought it was funny. But the first problem with Calvinists is the salvation process, okay? Now, to someone that normally hands out tracts and tries to uh, help people see that there is a fountain filled with blood yeah. drawn yeah. from yeah. Emmanuel's veins yeah. and sinners plunged yeah. beneath that flood lose all their guilty yeah. stains. Yeah. To the regular person like that, um, I hope to shock you. You know, but a Calvinist has it all wrong. Come on. If they actually are consistent with their yeah, doctrine, which often you will find inconsistent Calvinists that want the title Calvinist to get the reputation of a Calvinist, <laughs> to get the respect of a Calvinist, and have people kiss their stinking shoes for being a Calvinist when, when you get them down on it, they're not a Calvinist. Yeah. They're a fake. That's right. They yeah. are. They don't believe what they teach. But if they're willing to commit themselves, R.C. Sproul wants to tell you what they would believe. I believe R.C. Sproul committed himself. And uh, uh, R.C. Sproul says what predestination means uh, in its most elementary form is that our final destination, heaven or hell, is decided by God not only before we get there, but before we are even born. Another way of saying this, thank you for making it plainer for us, sir. Uh -huh. From all eternity, before we even existed, God decided to save some members of the human race and let the rest of the human race perish. That's page Amen. 161. Wicked. Okay? Regi now, uh, let me tell you, <laughs> brother, I have done drugs. I'm not proud of that. And it has harmed me for the rest of my life. I have issues that I will deal with for the rest of my life, but how stupid can you be? Yeah, amen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Man. Regeneration, uh, they want to show you something. Uh, they claim regeneration is before faith, okay? So I just went to the old school Webster's, but I found another one. I found the 1913. <laughs> That's right, sword searcher. Okay. But they gave me a definition for re regeneration. The entering into a new spiritual life. The act of becoming or being made Christian. That change which by holy affections and purposes are substituted for the opposite motives in the heart. So here we have basically a definition of being born again. Regeneration means born again. Regeneration means born again. Did anyone not get that? Regeneration. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. We're off to a good start. And uh, <clears throat> it's interesting that where R.C. and other Calvinists place this rebirth, R.C. Sproul says regeneration is the theological term used to describe rebirth. It refers to a new generating, a new genesis, a new beginning, page 171. But on page uh, 169, he says, the effectual call of God is an inward call. Press pause, because I forgot to say this. I need your guys' as mind. Start, I, I know you guys... You, Praise the Lord, you know, how you run the kids out in the playground first and then you bring them in to learn. You guys ran it all out. I need your minds. Try to stick with me. Try to stick with me, okay? All right. All right. So, uh, yeah, where were we here? Um, okay. Uh, 
I know, I got three quotes, and I read one. Okay, I think I'm on the second. The effectual call of God is an inward call. It is the secret work of quickening and regenerating regeneration accomplished in the souls of the elect by the immediate supernatural operation of the Holy Spirit. He says, he continues, everyone who is effectually called is now disposed to God and then responds in faith, page 169. But then he says, regeneration is not to be confused with the full experience of conversion. It occurs by God's divine initiative and is an act that is sovereign, immediate, and instantaneous. An awareness of our conversion may be gradual, yet rebirth is instantaneous. Regeneration is not the fruit or result of faith. Rather, regeneration precedes faith as necessary, as necessary condition for faith. We do, okay, listen to me now. If you heard nothing I said, listen to me now. Why did you choose uh, R.C. Sproul, Brother Randy? He is one of their heavy hitters. That's right, he is. He is like the man in the Calvinist realm. Okay, and I didn't pick him for just some random reason because I'm mad at a Calvinist. I picked him because he kicked your King James Bible. That's why I picked him, okay? It says, we do not decide or choose to be regenerated. God chooses to regenerate us before we will ever choose to embrace Him. Page 172. Open your Bible to Ephesians 1.13. More of a Bible study. Amen. But obviously somebody, somebody needs it. You know, I, I just, I, I just couldn't, couldn't imagine... You know why I'm talking to someone who is a Ruckmanite for more than five years and all of a sudden they're giving me traditional Calvinist arguments that God predestinates people to burn in hell. I don't get that myself. But uh, let's go back to the Bible. Ephesians 1.13. It says, now we've already looked at this earlier. It says, in whom ye also trusted. After that ye heard the word of truth. The gospel of your salvation, in whom also that, uh, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy That's Spirit right. of promise. Right. That is the biblical process of salvation. Right. Uh, go to Colossians two. We're gonna go eat popcorn. Hang all right. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 11. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised uh, uh, him from the dead. You got that at the time of salvation. Right. At the time you believed. At the time you cried out to Jesus Christ right. to save your wicked. Wicked soul. Amen. Probably by a prayer. That's right. How about that? That's right. A prayer? This same individual, I, I just was poking, and I said, let me guess. Do you like the sinner's prayer? Do you think anyone could get saved by the sinner's prayer? Oh, no! By the way, that's the common link between Calvinism and hyperdispensationalism. And, and if you need about 172 verses on it, go to my YouTube channel that nobody watches. Amen, that nobody watches. Amen. I split my whole church over this thing. Amen. 170 plus verses. Uh, and, and, and I give you 21 reasons the sinner's prayer is biblical. You lazy bum, because you're not going to look. Yeah, that's right. And, and you, the stinking bums you're watching in their mother's basement That's could right. care less about your church, That's could right. care less about your kids, That's could right. care less about your pastor, right. and hate your pastor's wife. How about that? That's right. PBI training, by the way. Hmm. And I'm not kicking the school. We don't, we don't have any missionaries come through that aren't from the school. Just in case you want to go that route with Brother Randy. I'm not a PBI graduate. And you know why I like him? Because you don't. That's why I like him. Yeah. I don't have some deep exegesis for that. You don't like it, so I like it. Okay? Go to, go to Colossians 1.14. Now, if you didn't have a King James Bible, like many of these Calvinist fools, yeah, come on, kick they're going to have a problem right here. Yeah. 
But when you come to the church where you hate the pastor and are mad at the brethren, they have it. Isn't that something? Hmm. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. That's the missing verse right there. They, they remove the blood. Now, the idea here is that in the Calvinist view, before the blood was available to atone, that means before Jesus Christ died on the cross, that the atonement went out to people that weren't available to forgive. This is Calvinism. The blood of the cross was available to atone for people that didn't exist yet. No, I'm telling you Calvinism 101. You don't get that? This is Calvinism. Why are you watching the videos? Yeah, come on. Yeah, come on. I'm telling you what they believe. And that atonement went out to people that weren't available to forgive except in some pre-existent spirit state. What? What? Whoa. 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 Amen. Keep kicking. Come on. Come on. Are we in the Mormon church? <laughs> I don't know. You're the one watching the videos. Great. You tell me. Five steps to the order of salvation. He gives on page 172, he gives regeneration, faith, justification, sanctification, glorification. T U L I P. What is this asphyxiation with the number five? I just think it's kind of weird. It's probably the number of grace. <laughs> So after providing this list uh, that attempts to prove the hallucination that regeneration comes before faith, Sproul, R.C. Sproul, whatever you say his name is. See, I don't even know him well enough to pronounce his name right. Good. Who corrected me when I said Sproul? All right, yeah, you've been watching the video, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, he then goes on to add another step that he calls repentance. It's just separate from all of it, which I assume... Okay, anyway, let's move on to the next problem. So the first problem was their salvation process. Ultimately, they don't have one if they're yeah. consistent. Yeah. They believe their salvation process uh, was all before Genesis 1-1, which means what? Nothing. Nothing at all. What's the verse before Genesis 1-1? I thought... I thought, I thought, I thought uh, all scriptures given by inspiration of God is profitable for, for doctrine, for proof, for correction, for instruction. What, what's your scripture for anything before Genesis 1-1? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody? Crickets. Hmm. Calvinist crickets, apparently. <laughs> so the next problem is a problem of who Jesus died for. Okay, now I just... I'm daring you to call my hand. Because the things I'm going to say are so atrocious, all right? I, c I give you the page number on this book. Yeah. You can get this thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, got, I got highlights in here. If you want to check out all these highlights, call my hand, man, all right? So R.C. Sproul says, <clears throat> which is good right here, contradictions can never coexist. Uh -huh. Amen. That's in a different book. That's Chosen by God, page 44. Mm -hmm. That's a good quote. Mm -hmm. Contradictions can never coexist. So for Mr. Sproul, there are many contradictions in this area here, who Jesus died for, and the fear of not being popular will not stop me from showing them to you. Amen? I'm already not popular. And I, I just want to tell you, if I lived in Geneva, Switzerland, uh, at the time that Calvin was running the show, I, I would be quartered. Okay, what, what's quartered? Well, it's not counting out pennies, okay? <laughs> they, they tie your hands and your feet all to a separate horse, and then they shoot a gun or, or whip wow. them or something, and, and they all run separate. That's Fox's Book of Martyrs How stuff that, right there. But although his... Uh, his um, Execution method of uh, practice was normally burning folks at this. Uh -huh. Oh, that's a Roman Catholic. Uh -huh. Oh, that's oh, probably, you know. Come on. Yeah. R.C. Sproul says this. In receiving the wrath of the Father on the cross, Christ was able to make atonement for his people. 
Okay? Essential Truths of the Christian Faith, page 173. He says on the next page, Both Father and Son willed the salvation of the elect and work together to bring it to pass. As the Apostle Paul wrote, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. He didn't even read his own verses he's quoting. But okay, whatever. Let's now look at the Bible. 2 Peter 3.9. And you know what? I hope you know all the verses, and I hope this thing just bores you to death. I hope you know it all, but you know what I fear as a pastor? You don't know it. You don't know it. And you don't, you don't care to take notes about it. You know, and, and, and when you're on YouTube University, hey amen, you know more than your pastor, right? You're on YouTube University, and you don't even open a Bible. You don't even open a, a notebook. You're not taking notes. You're not going scripture by scripture. You, you, you know what? You just think you're just going to sit there and just absorb it on the computer screen. Yep. <sighs> and then when you wake up and the video's over and it's like playing the fourth or fifth video, you're like, what happened? <laughs> what, why is there a dog? Like, you know, this dog's running, chasing its tail, and the people are laughing. Like, how did I get here? That's your YouTube university. That's right. 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering us, word, not willing that any, any, any should perish, but that all, all, all should come to repentance. Highlight that stinking verse. Amen. Do it. You don't have it highlighted. I'm going to ask you to be an overachiever right now. You're going to make a cross reference. <laughs> right next to that verse, go ahead and put 1 John 2.2. 2. Okay? I'm going to help you. Because this is what you don't do when you're watching YouTube. Yeah, Amen? Right. You're absolutely right. Amen. I'm not kicking Brother Gene for having... Mm. It's been a blessing. Oh. I got... I got I, what, in the past, like, we talked about, I think in the past month, two months, we've gotten three people calling about our church just because of this, brother. So I'm not kidding. I put my videos on YouTube. They're just not as pretty. <laughs> it's so funny, brother. <laughs> First John 2, 2. You're the, hey, you put yourself out there, brother. Okay. First John 2, 2. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole. Amen. Do you know what whole world means? Yeah. Tell us in the Greek, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I don't know Greek. <laughs> and I could still know God. Amen. Isn't that something? Amen. Isn't that something? Now, next to that verse, 1 John 2.2, 2, I want you to write Hebrews 2.9. <laughs> I'm going to give you a chain reference of about six verses here. Mm. Okay? Right, Hebrews 2 9. Give me an amen when you're there. Amen. amen. But we see Jesus, who is made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Now, I asked you a question, didn't I? I said, What does whole world mean? It means every man. Amen. Amen. Now, next to that verse, right, Titus 2.11. Mm -hmm. Titus 2.11. And I'm not trying to be facetious, okay? I'm kind of having fun up here. You ask my wife. I'm, I'm not always very tasteful, but, you know, uh, roll with me. If you don't have these written down or you don't have them committed to memory, write it down. I mean, I'm just trying to be a help to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you know, so, so that night when the devil takes you down YouTube lane... Yep. You know, and, and, and you're angry, you're frustrated, you regret ever meeting a Bible believer that, you know what, you're, and you start looking at John MacArthur, R.C. Sproul, yeah, all, these, all these fools, like Ruckman said, they couldn't find a bowling ball in a bathtub. Sorry, Dr. Ruckman, I'm not a PBI graduate. Dr. Ruckman, okay? I know you guys got your little things too, amen? <laughs> amen. He told me personally I was a heretic, all right? So, Amen. That's why I told him I spent too much money in his bookstore. But, so, you guys uh, wrote Titus 2.11? Okay, are you there? 
Okay. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. All men. All men. Okay. Is there any way you could take the reverb off this thing or is it just the pool room? Because I feel like it's like... Whoa, 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 whoa. I hate reverb. Sorry. Um, now next to that verse, write 1 Timothy 2.4. 1 Timothy 2.4. Now, what I'm giving you, all you need to remember is one verse. All you need to remember is 2 Peter 3.9. That's it. That's it. You can go home, and as you find more, you can make this cross-reference 50 verses. Yeah. Easy. You could do it if you're willing to take the time. But right now, I'm making you take the time yeah. because you're probably not going to take the time because you're watching YouTube. Okay? 1 Timothy 2.4, who will, we're talking about God's will, remember? Amen. Calvinists say, Calvinists say that his will is for half the human race or more, or maybe majority, because, you know, a few are chosen, and, <laughs> you know. But God's will, who will have all men to be saved, and to come under the knowledge of the truth. Now, next to 1 Timothy 2.4, write 2 Peter 2.1. 2 Peter 2.1. Now, this is the humdinger right here. Yeah, it is. This is a good one right here. Yeah, it is. Can't go around Second Peter 2.1. Yeah. But there were false prophets. Are those good or bad? bad. Okay, bad. good. You're, you're learning. <laughs> there were false prophets. Also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers. Good or bad? Bad. 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 Okay, among you. Who privily shall bring in damnable heresies? Is that good or bad? bad. Okay, that's bad. Even denying the Lord that Whoa. bought them? Whoa. What? Whoa. Bought them? And will bring upon themselves swift destruction. Now, if God predestinated it, they didn't do it to themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yet another inconsistency. Yeah. See, there's many different ways we could have went. But, you know, I'm not the expert. I want to let our boy here tell you. Yeah. I want to let him tell you. Because I'm not an expert. All right? He is. By their own camp, mm -hmm. he is. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, page 26, R.C. says uh, about uh, how to understand the Scripture, we should not accept the implication as correct if it goes against something explicitly stated elsewhere in Scripture. Oh. Oh. So, what did I show you? Oh. I showed you what he taught, and then I gave you seven verses to show you that it wasn't, uh, how did he say, that the implication was incorrect uh, because it went against something explicitly stated elsewhere in Scripture. Oh. I gave you seven verses. There's yeah. more. Yeah. I just gave you seven. Yeah. This is him, his writing, okay? Now, which means that Calvinists uh, have to change the Bible to assist their crippled theology. Now, uh, Calvinism started with a Roman Catholic, and they actually prefer you to refer to them as Augustinians. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Who is Augustine? Mm -hmm. He is the Roman Catholic of Roman Catholics. That's right, he is. Yep. And I'm not prying here, but raise your hand if you're an ex-Roman Catholic, which I'm not. My wife is. We got ex-Roman Catholics right here. You want to go back to Rome? Calvinism's a good way to do it. That's how you go back to Rome. Okay? Now, uh, anyway, I got... Stay on it, Randy. Stay on it. Okay. On the line here. They have to change the Bible to assist their crippled theology because it doesn't have a biblical leg to stand on. Calvinism is this. Starts as a philosophy and forces itself into the Bible. Uh -huh, that's right. Bible believing dispensationalism starts with the Bible and forces a, f a f foot uh, 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 through the teeth of those fools. Yeah, yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. 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 And that wasn't nice, okay? <laughs> but Pastor Kim said I didn't have to be nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now, the Jesus of Calvinism is a different Jesus who would refuse to shed a drop of blood for the damned and, right. and for those who would reject him. Open up to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. And I understand you guys are all pumped up. Man, come on, Randy. I thought you were going to stir us up. You know, I, I'm telling you, man, I was kind of, I, I had a message. But Brother Robert took it. I was going to preach how to make a jailbreak, and he, he took the title and everything. 
So I was like, okay, God, all right, I guess we're doing a little Bible study. All right, John chapter 1 and verse 11. Now remember, they don't believe that Jesus would shed a drop of blood for anyone that would re reject him, right? So he's not going to exercise himself for anyone that would reject him. Look at verse 11. He came unto his own, and his own did what? Receive him not. How about that? Well, that can't be right. Because R.C. Sproul and John MacArthur are wrong? Yes, they are. That's right. They're wrong. That's right. That's right. Sure. Well, Brother Randy, how many people are in your church, brother? <laughs> Probably less than yours. Probably less than yours. Well, I mean, how many people are in John MacArthur's? A lot. Uh -huh. You know what my mama taught me? You know what my mama taught me? <laughs> what? What? Say it. My mama taught me, if, you were, if everybody in the world was walking off a bridge, would you walk off too? <laughs> hey, man, come on. Come on. Good. And at that time, I probably would have, but I wouldn't anymore. Amen. 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 Proverbs 30, verse 6, don't turn there. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Amen. So we've looked at three Calvinist pro or I'm sorry, two. Let's go to the third. The first one was their Calvinist problem in the salvation process. Next, the Calvinist problem of who Jesus died for. Thirdly, the Calvinist problem of free will. Ready? The Calvinist focuses hard on the wickedness of man and then tries to point out that people go to hell because they have followed their natural sinful compulses that have earned them a just punishment in hell. All this is forgetting that these rejected individuals by Calvinism standard were chosen to fuel the fires of hell before they were even born. Yep. Now the, the problem with Calvinism, and since you're watching it so much, thank you for asking what it is. <laughs> I hope you're not. I fear you are. Okay? It is, is that the problem is it puts, number one, it gives no answer to why there's two judgments. The judgment seat of Christ, and then the great white throne judgment. Um, may, maybe they could say, oh, well, the judgment seat of Christ for believers. Okay, let's take that off. The great white throne judgment. Okay? Why? For what? You know, the only person put in the stand at this judgment, if Calvinism is right, is the Lord Jesus Christ. You made me this way. Uh-huh. Now, I, I see you over there. You're getting ready to throw me into hell. But you made me to do this. How about that? How about that? You made me to do that sinful wickedness. I had no choice in the matter. I had no free will. You're guilty, Jesus. How about that? And I thought that at the... I thought every mouth was going to be stopped. Those mouths would be going for eternity. So the Calvinist problem of free will. R.C. Sproul says on page 179 and 180, At this very moment you're reading these words because you choose of your own free will to read them. Every choice we make in life, uh, we make for some reason. There can be no doubt that human beings do indeed make choices. This is important to note that even the unregenerate are never forced against their will. Their wills are changed without permission, but they are always free to choose as they will. Oh, you didn't get that? He gives you a bunch of examples on how you have free will. Then he says, your will is changed without permission. And then he says, but you're free to choose as your free will allows. What does that mean? That means that Brother R.C. Sproul was ready for a straitjacket. Yeah, that's right. Amen. You know, when you start talking about pink elephants chasing squirrels up a purple tree, you know, and, and, and how dogs chase green tires on, on, on Zoom nuffs, you know, you got a problem, bro. You're the one watching his YouTube videos. It got quiet right there. It shouldn't get quiet right there. You go, kick that dog! Kick that dog! Kick that dog! You know what I fear? I fear somebody's watching it. 
And I, this is just a concern of just a, a local pastor. That's all. So, to, uh, he said, uh, I got another Calvinist quote, just so I didn't get this definition wrong, of what is total depravity, okay? Because, uh, you know, because they're just going, oh, Randy's not even a Calvinist. I thought I was a Calvinist, actually, when I was a new believer. We had a Calvinist creep into our little Bible study. It was a Calvary Chapel Bible study. Because Calvinists don't soul win. Yeah, Amen. Right. What they do is they go to churches yeah. Yeah. and they wait till after the service right. and they talk to your church members yeah, right. and they try to reel them in. Because you guys are a bunch of suckers. Yep, that's right. That's right. Keep kicking. Tell them. I mean, maybe you can't. Maybe you. Okay, I apologize. Maybe I was a little rough. I love you guys. I love you guys. Don't be a sucker. How about that? That's a better way to say that. Clean it up, brother. You know? I'm trying, brother. Okay. But the thing is, even if you can't, if you can't answer all their arguments, the first mark of any cult is the rejection of the King James Bible. You need to remember that. And how about this? Just out of five ounces of, of, uh, of sincere affection for your pastor and his wife, give him the benefit of the doubt. He's been around you a little more. You know, they might have brought you a meal when you were sick one day. You know, I mean, he's, he's calling you if something's up. Uh, bro, you okay? Can I pray with you? Like, you know, he's spent five more minutes probably with you than this cat. You know? Um... But Spencer says total depravity insists that man does not have a free will in the sense that he is free to trust Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. That's total depravity by them. That's what they say. Now, uh, R.C. Sproul says, although the, gosp the gospel freely offers forgiveness to all who repent of their sins, dot, 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 you stinking liar, you don't believe that. That's right. You don't believe that. You believe that the gospel is freely given to the elect only. That's right. Yeah. And all he, he's an educated liar. Yeah. That's all he is. He's an educated, right. paid, educated liar. Amen. Sproul does not believe the gospel is offered to all, nor does he believe to, uh, to be a partaker you must repent and believe. He believes regeneration, quote, regeneration precedes faith, page 172. Regeneration precedes faith. What does that mean? You don't got to do nothing to be saved. What does that mean? You, you don't even have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. How about that? How about that? That's a good point. We're talking about an orthodox theologian. <laughs> You're the one that watches him. I don't know. I'm just trying to help you. Well, brother, you're not doing it very well. You're making a mockery. It's because it's that stupid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Amen. That's right. Amen. Um. <clears throat> R.C. Sproul says, What predestination means in its most elementary form is that our final destination, heaven or hell, is decided by God not only before we get there, but before we are even born. Another way of saying it is this. From all eternity, before we even existed, God decided to save some, some members of the human race and the rest uh, of the human race uh, and let the rest of the human race perish. Now, this completely disregards the fact that Jesus commands in John 3 to be born again. Go to John 3. Yeah, that's right. It's a command. Yeah. So, once again, if your doctrine... I mean, there's a few different ways to say this, but if your doctrine has a contradiction, you don't get a new Bible, you get a new doctrine. Okay? And if your doctrine puts the Lord Jesus Christ on, on the stand uh -huh. in the judgment, uh -huh. you need to get a new doctrine. Yeah, that's right. He's innocent. Yeah, that's right. You're not. Amen. 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 Now in John 3, 5, we're going to read 5 through 7. 
Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. Now, if you have a perverted Bible, it changed it to you. That's not what it said. It said ye. Okay? Now, now it, you is in the Bible. You. Ye is not you. You know what ye is? A southerner would know probably quicker than we would. Ye means y'all. Yeah, that's right. You all. You all. Mm -hmm. Ye is not you. Mm -hmm. Ye is you all. Mm -hmm. So when these lazy Bible correctors make a new Bible and profit off of your books uh -huh. and line their pockets with it, they didn't even read it. Yep. So that's a command and a decree of God the Son. Okay? That ye all, that y'all, ye must be born again. Uh -huh. Amen? Now, it's an impossible request to the unregenerate, right? In their, in their world of thinking. It'd be impossible for somebody not chosen before Genesis 1-1 to ever get saved. Mm -hmm. Turn to Acts 17. We're in Acts chapter 17. And look at verse 30. Acts chapter 17 and verse 30. It says, In the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth, but now commandeth, right. but now... Co okay, well, we're looking at a command. Could you agree? Yeah. Give me an amen if you agree. Amen. Okay, amen. now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why would he waste his breath? Yeah. yeah. I wrote this because this is how my mind works. So the carousel keeps spinning and the clowns are all tiring. It's been a long day of asking the kids to get back in line around the carnival. <laughs> <laughs> and yet you're subscribed to their YouTube channel. How about that? And we laugh and we're like, this makes no sense, but we're probably going to lose church people this year. Uh-huh. To this. Yeah, that's right. Why? Now, uh, let's just, uh, I got to end it somewhere, so might as well end it here. This is your fourth problem. The Calvinist problem of knowing if you're saved. Mm -hmm. Tends to be a problem. Yeah. The topic is a perplexing item for a Calvinist. <laughs> Who will uh, be first to say that you're saved by faith alone? They'll say that first. You're saved by faith alone. Okay? Yeah, as we've seen, there's no point in time that a true Calvinist can ever point to when they got regenerated because they believe that happens before birth. Therefore, anyone is born already saved or damned. Did that make sense? I know I'm reading. I'm not trying to sound like a computer. But... A true Calvinist does not have a salvation date. That's right. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, yeah, that's, cool. yeah that's right. Now, Brother Rob, he, he goes into the prisons and he throws me some curves with the questions he gets in these prisons. But, you know, you get someone in there saying, yes, sir, I'm regenerated. Oh, well, amen, brother. When would you get saved? Yeah. I've always been. Where do you go with that? Yeah. You've always been saved. I mean, we're used to the, I grew up in the Catholic Church, we're used to that. Yeah. We're used to that. But I've always been saved. Hmm. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you haven't been. Yeah. Yeah, unless you're John the Baptist, you're leaping in the womb, you know, with the Holy... You're not John the Baptist. His beard was way cooler than yours. <laughs> Wow, that was a big laugh back there, <laughs> Brother Tom. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, okay. So, what do they run to in justifying proof of their salvation? Let's ask R.C. Sproul. Okay. He's a good guy to ask. Uh -huh. He is an authority. Yeah. R.C. Sproul says, Justification is by faith alone. And that faith is ne a necessary condition for salvation. And I put in parentheses here, although regeneration precedes faith, remember, page 172, you committed yourself in writing, you bum! Yeah. Sproul then references James chapter 2 
and, and, and the whole can faith alone save him. Go to James 2. I'm going to destroy this argument in two seconds. I don't have a college degree. Uh, I mean, we got a few places we can go. Let, let's try 17. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. That's kind of the dead horse that they just kick right there. Where's your works? Uh -huh. Even in so, this is where they bring you. Go to James 1.1. 1, 1. <laughs> you should know it. Yeah. But since you've been watching so much YouTube, you don't. That's right. The first verse... Of the first chapter, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes, to the twelve tribes, right. to the twelve tribes, right. which are scattered abroad, greeting. Yep. You're not one of the twelve tribes. Yeah. That's right. I love you. <laughs> Jesus loves you, but you're not one of the twelve tribes. That's right. You're just not. That's right. So you, you want to go to James? I mean, you, there is a lot of good things in James. Sure. But when you're referencing salvation-related material, you bounce it off Paul. That's right. You bounce it off Paul. That's right. That's right. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You probably know it better than I do, and I praise the Lord for that. But why are you still mixed up in James 2? Yeah, that's right. That was always a dilemma. I didn't know. Now, when I was in Calvary Chapel, I was, I was twisted right there. I didn't get it. So as I'd be witnessing at the Metrolink, peop uh, at the Metrolink, when people are coming off, it's a train, if you don't know what that is, but you know they'd come off, we'd try to witness to them. I would, in my mind, just pray that they didn't take me to James 2, because I didn't know how to answer it. Oh, wow. And I'd just show them the regular Pauline, John 3.16. John 3.16 is Pauline, by the way. It was written after the Pauline revelation, yeah, you stinking right. bum. Yeah. Read a book once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. Amen! Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> but, um, so anyway, he's going to take you to James 2, okay? And then he uses a bunch of cliches about justification is by faith alone. This is the quote. This is the quote right here. This is R.C. Sproul 101. This is how they get you. This is his quote. Right? This, is a, this is a bomb right here. Justification is by faith alone, but not by a faith that is alone. <laughs> Page 192. And all the while forgets to address the apparent contradiction. James 2, Ephesians 2. It's an apparent contradiction. There needs to be an answer. We looked at that. He continues to explain how Luther and the Reformation, the Reformers defining saving faith as having... You're going to love this. I've been waiting to drop this bomb. This is a good, this is a good video. This will get you hits right here. <laughs> no, if you preached it, it really would. This is the quote. I got a girl in our church. She falls on the ground laughing every time I, I quote this quote. Okay? It's that funny. And I'm going to try to say it like R.C. Sproul would, just for the... Saving faith is having a... Necessary constituent elements. <laughs> Necessary constituent elements. <laughs> what does that mean, Brother Randy? It's funny sounding. Yeah. That means that your work saves you. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Observation. Yeah, and then... And then uh, mm. Okay, let's move on. Uh, Acts 8.37, go there. Nothing new. Shouldn't be. I don't know why just plain teaching so cutting edge these days. Acts 8.37. These are just basic how to get saved verses. If you're not saved, this is how easy it is. Don't listen to some idiot like R.C. Sproul. Yeah. He doesn't want you to get saved. Right. He doesn't want you to pray a sinner's prayer to get saved. Right. Amen? Uh, with someone who has met the Father. Like, think about that. Think about that. Okay? Say, say if one of these little kids is like, Hey, 
I want to meet Pastor Randy. And they asked Josiah, can I meet your dad? You know, the best way for him to meet me would be through my son. Mm -hmm. Right there. Uh -huh. And you know what we're called? We're called sons of God after yeah. we're saved. You know, the best way to meet Jesus Christ yeah. is with the help of one that's already a son yeah. of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh, you don't know how to, we don't know what to pray to get saved? I can help you, brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know exactly what my, what my father loves. That's good. I know what he loves. That's good preaching there. That's good. I'll tell you exactly what to say. Amen. You got to mean it from your heart. Yeah, that's right. Because my dad can see right through false words. That's good. This but if good you mean it with your heart, yeah. my daddy will love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. This is good. <laughs> we'll bunk together, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we, man. We got ATCs. Do those even exist anymore? Man, we, we got so much good stuff, man. You're going to see. Amen. Amen. Acts 8, 37. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. Yeah. That's all you got to do to get saved. Uh -huh. The next verse. He got baptized. You don't. You don't. I mean, I'm not. Gonna, I'm not taking you there. But my point is, that is the proof text for believers' baptism. Uh -huh. yep. You know what your first step of obedience is after you're saved? Right. Believers' baptism. Mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't save you. He was already saved. Mm -hmm. Pastor Yancey used to always say, if you if you get baptized before you're saved, you just got a Duncan. <laughs> you just got wet. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Go to Acts 16:31. These are all your bumper stickers, huh? Amen. Good. And repetition's the best teacher, isn't it? Yeah. Amen. Yep. Acts 16, 31, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Go to John 3, 15. John 3, 15. John 3.15, that whosoever, whosoever, yes, whosoever. Sir, did anyone hear me? I said whosoever. Right. Does your Bible say whosoever? Yes. It is a Bible word. Amen. Amen. You know what's not? Sovereignty. That's right. It's not in there. Even the founding fathers used it in the founding documents, and it wasn't in the Bible. Yeah, that's right. Okay? They weren't writing the Bible. Yeah, okay? Right. They were writing some legislation. Yeah, okay? That's right. I thought... <laughs> whosoever believeth in him should not perish whosoever what does works no no sinner's prayer is not a work uh -huh. that's right you don't know what work is <laughs> we're in a weird spot aren't we you don't know what work is i guess sinner's prayers work you're a lazy bum sinner's prayers work what would you have to do <laughs> Bow your head. <laughs> oh, man, you're probably sweating, dude. <laughs> that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Okay, how long is eternal life? Forever. For all eternity, right? Verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, 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 the Bible's teaching you something. It's using similar words over and over. It's painting a picture of the salvation of God and who it's offered to. Is this too loud? Because I'm kind of, okay, okay. Just, all right. <laughs> but uh, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. How long is everlasting life? It's everlasting, right? Amen. Now, this one I like, 17. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. And then once again, He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Uh -huh. There's a reason why John 3.16 is quoted so often. It's because it falls right here over and over and over and there's a reason why these Calvinists hate that verse. Uh -huh. Now, the fact is, the Calvinists will never know if they're saved without works. That's a fact. They don't want to admit it because that's the uh, elephant in the room. Yeah, that's right. All right? 
Um, yeah, all right. R.C. Sproul says this, quote, The easiest way to have a false assurance of salvation is to have a false doctrine of salvation. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. For once, we agree. Yeah. That's on page 202. And I'm thinking, oh, like believing you're regenerated before you ever had faith in Christ? Yeah. Now, what else does he say on 202? If no fruit is present, then no faith is present. Where saving faith is found, fruit of faith is also found. That's what he says. Go to 1 John 5.13. So he just... Uh, it's just the same old thing, man. You know, I, I hope you're sick of hearing this stuff. But <laughs> as sick as I am... But people are still twisted up they in this are. junk. First John 5.13 These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So John, bless God, was under the assumption that somebody could know they're saved. A Calvinist will never know if they're saved. That's right. Just like a Catholic. Mm -hmm. How about that? You caught them. So it's all double talk. It's all double talk. They got to make some cliche phrase that sounds like they're saying something uh, when they're not saying anything. You know, like necessary constituent elements. <laughs> These people are willfully ignorant. They have made cunning and devised fables, have sought out teachers having itching ears, and have been spoiled through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men like Augustine, the stinking Roman Catholic, and Calvin, the murderer. That's right. Yep. Reference Michael Servetus. Yeah, that's right. That's the other thing. Oh, you're going to bring... Yeah, I'm going to bring it up because it's true. Yeah. If I killed one person, you'd bring it up. That's right, yeah. 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 Duh. Yeah. Yeah. Calvin, when he was in Geneva, Switzerland, was part of a Protestant jihad that that's ended right. people's life if yep. they did not agree with the moral majority, disregarding their own philosophy. Well, how so? that God created these people as kindling for the flames. Can't they at least exist? Look, these people are, are already created. If you're going to be consistent, they're going to hell. This is all the existence they'll ever know. I mean, they can experience the common grace of God. You know, and all these dumb words they use. And But give them a break, man. They're headed for the lake of fire. That's right. Yeah. Come on. The problem is they don't believe their own doctrine. Yeah. So they'd rather burn Michael Servetus at the stake for a simple disagreement. You ever met someone that you didn't agree with? Doctrinally? How long did it take you to get over it? I mean, maybe some people a little bit longer. But some people pretty quick. I mean, I'm kind of to the point. I don't expect anyone to agree with me now. There's somebody here that doesn't agree with me right now. Amen? And, and I will accept your, uh, your, uh, I'll accept you getting right when you come off of their YouTube. Unsubscribe. Wow. Wow, that's so hard to do, bro. <laughs> Press a button. Unsubscribe. You see how weak you are? So, um, the bothered conscience of the reformers said there can be nobody different. They must die, the, or these heretics must die, just like their uh, uh, Catholic mother Rome. They burn them at the stake. They burn them at the stake. So, um, let us end with a deep exegetical of the upstanding Calvinist theologian of all day. A leader in the faith and a go-to for truth. Are you ready for my final quotation? Yeah, 
<laughs> we might need you, sir. <laughs> This is R.C. Sproul's quote on page 285, and this is the humdinger right here. Ready? The Bible describes hell as a place of outer darkness, a lake of fire, a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth, a place of eternal separation from the blessings of God, a prison, a place of torment, where the worm, uh, it says, uh, doesn't turn or die. These graphic images of eternal punishment provoke the question, should we take them literally, or are they mere symbols? I suspect they are symbols. Oh. Page 285. And it, oh, you if you're kicking Billy Graham for talking about a symbolic hell, put that in your stinking pipe. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You inconsistent, lying, paid liar. Yeah. You fool. Amen. Amen. Wow, hiding it up. I don't have an amazing conclusion, but I mean, I'm saying this. If, if you are getting duped by this stuff, yeah. it's as easy as just asking your pastor, were people predestinated to go to hell? Yeah. Oh, oh well, I don't call my pastor because I get a voicemail. Leave a message. Pastor, I'm watching a YouTube video, and I need to know if people are predestinated to go to hell. I could guarantee these guys here are chomping at the bit to answer that question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I missed your call. <laughs> Do you have your Bible? <laughs> Why? Because it's easy to answer. But yet people are still getting duped. And it's not just people. It's dispensational That's people. Right. That's right. Isn't that amazing? I don't want you to be one of them. There's Calvinism they're swaying to. Hyper-dispensationalism they're swaying to. You know what, what's right? The Bible. Amen. Something that keeps you around Christians. This is going to... You're going to be out. This way, you're going to be out. You're going to be YouTube University till you die. Stick with the Bible. That's right. Stick with Christians. Stick with a pastor that preaches the Bible. Amen. And that always doesn't preach what you want to hear. Amen. Amen. And, and you know what the, the problem is? We don't claim to have some secret truth, do we? No. We don't claim to have some no. secret truth. And that's your problem. You're looking for some secret truth. Oh, how about that? Yeah. We have many musicians in this thing here. <laughs> We got a lot of musicians. I'm a kind. I'm. I. I could play guitar like this much, but you know what? I'm not gonna move to the violin until I learn that guitar better. Y you know what these people learn how to do? They learn how to strum the guitar open, and they say, "I could play guitar." Then they grab a violin and they smash it on on the table and say, "I could play violin." Then they grab a harmonica, and I don't want to tell you what they do with that, but you know, you know, it's just. What are you thinking about, brother? <laughs> but that's my problem. You haven't mastered the first thing. Yeah, that's right. Why are you moving? If you can't answer basic questions like yeah, this stuff, yeah. this is basic. Yeah. It's not time to move. It's time to stay. Amen. And it's time to learn. Amen. Time to open the book, Amen. take some notes, yeah. ask some questions. Yeah. There's institutes. My church has a free one. There's PBI. There's TBDI. I know he has a discipleship. I know Brother Stevenson does. What's your excuse? Yeah, none. I mean, it's, it's amazing to me. I got, we got a guy from Nairobi, Africa, like, praising the Lord that we gave him a free Bible Institute. Amen. Amen. What's he so happy for? Yeah. He appreciates it because it's not available where he lives. That's right. You guys are drowning in it. That's right. And you still don't know it. Yep. So let's go ahead and stand. I don't know if that's time for an altar. I don't know what the Lord even did with this thing. But I just hope to God, if anyone's tied up in this stuff, you don't have to be tonight. Press a button. Unsubscribe. You know, watch Gene's stuff. Watch Pastor Stevenson's stuff. Watch Pastor Shrod's stuff. He's got a lot of videos. That guy was brilliant. 
I, if God bring him back, I know he's going to come back with a fervor. I don't know. But I mean, he did a good work. He plowed, man. All that stuff is free to you.